July 16th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 from the New Testament. I wish that you would be patient with me in a little foolishness, but indeed you are being patient with me, for I am jealous for you with godly jealousy, because I promised you in marriage to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that just as the serpent deceived Eve by his treachery, your minds may be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus different from the one we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit than the one you received, or a different gospel than the one you accepted, you put up with it well enough. For I consider myself not at all inferior to those super apostles, and even if I am unskilled in speaking, yet I am certainly not so in knowledge. Indeed, we have made this plain to you in everything, in every way. Or did I commit a sin by humbling myself so that you could be exalted, because I proclaimed the gospel of God to you free of charge? I robbed other churches by receiving support from them so that I could serve you. When I was with you and was in need, I was not a burden to anyone. For the brothers who came from Macedonia fully supplied my needs. I kept myself from being a burden to you in any way and will continue to do so. As the truth of Christ is in me, this boasting of mine will not be stopped in the regions of Achaia. Why? Because I do not love you? God knows I do. And what I am doing I will continue to do, so that I may eliminate any opportunity for those who want a chance to be regarded as our equals in the things they boast about. For such people are false prophets, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore it is not surprising his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will correspond to their actions. I say again, let no one think that I am a fool, but if you do, then at least accept me as a fool, so that I too may boast a little. What I am saying with this boastful confidence, I do not say the way the Lord would. Instead, it is, as it were, foolishness. Since many are boasting according to human standards, I too will boast. For since you are so wise, you put up with fools gladly. For you put up with it if someone makes slaves of you, if someone exploits you, if someone takes advantage of you. If someone behaves arrogantly toward you, if someone strikes you in the face, to my disgrace, I must say that we were too weak for that. But whatever anyone else dares to boast about, I am speaking foolishly. I also dare to boast about the same thing. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am talking like I am out of my mind. I am even more so with much greater labors, with far more imprisonments, with more severe beatings, facing death many times. Five times I received from the Jews forty lashes, less one. Three times I was beaten with a rod, once I received a stoning. Three times I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I spent adrift in the open sea. I have been on journeys many times, in dangers from rivers, in dangers from robbers, in dangers from my own countrymen, in dangers from Gentiles, in dangers in the city, in dangers in the wilderness, in dangers at sea, in dangers from false brothers, in hard work and toil through many sleepless nights, in hunger and thirst, many times without food, in cold and without enough clothing. Apart from other things, there is the daily pressure of me, of my anxious concern for all the churches. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is led into sin and I do not burn with indignation? If I must boast, I will boast about the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, who is blessed forever, knows I am not lying. In Damascus, the governor under King Aretas was guarding the city of Damascus in order to arrest me. But I was let down in a rope basket through a window in the city wall and escaped his hands.
God, we're starting to see more and more false apostles, uh, people who are out there sharing the so-called gospel of you, um, but not doing it authentically, um, actually delivering information and, and getting people to believe in it that's not the truth. And this is not only scary <laughs> because there's people out there doing this, but they are leading people away from salvation. Now, thankfully, we know that salvation comes through you and that you choose us. We don't choose you. Uh, and thank goodness that you're in control of that situation. But we do know that Satan is out there and has his workers very vigilantly out there proclaiming a gospel that is not the truth. Not only is that obviously incredibly difficult for a Christian to see happening for multiple reasons, but I think in this section that, that we talk about with Paul, we see it in a little bit different light that Paul is having to waste, in my point of view, waste so much time proving himself as someone truly from you because of these false apostles. They sort of remind me a little bit of the people we're reading about in Ezra who are trying to stop or frustrate the building of the new temple from the people coming out of captivity in Babylon. It's the same type of thing. If they can get people to believe in a false gospel, that's awesome. And if they can frustrate and take up valuable time of the people who are, who are delivering the true gospel of you, then that's even better. It's like a double bonus for them. And I see that happening here with Paul, that, that he's incredibly frustrated with these people and f very frustrated with the church for believing these, these false prophets that are happening in that area. And obviously continue through my current day. And he's spending a lot of time having to prove that they should listen to him over these false prophets. And I find that so frustrating that we encounter enough opposition as it is just doing what we're supposed to do. The great commandment going out, great commission going out and telling people about you. Um, but yet to have all these people taking up and wasting our valuable time, sidetracking us off of what we really need to be doing. Paul is incredibly wise, and so I'm not calling into question, obviously, anything that he's saying or doing uh, with these churches, but you can tell his passion and the depth of passion of the people who are trying to sidetrack all of the work he's doing for you, God. I think we need to keep that in mind as a focus when we are working in ministry with that full awareness and full knowledge that not only will things be put in our path to stop us, but there's also that level of confusion that can happen with what we're trying to do. Uh, it's almost easier for Satan to get a stronghold into our ministries with confusion or frustration or impatience than just full out war against what it is we're doing. Uh, those are much easier emotions to develop, uh, especially, uh, especially us who are fallible human beings. It's so easy to prey upon our ego and get us frustrated with what it is we're trying to do in, in your name, God. And I just pray for everyone today that, that that discernment will come in their ministry when they need to have that righteous anger and do as Paul is doing, boasting in our weakness, uh, to prove to people uh, who we really are. And then what it looks like to go on our own way and not let the people antagonize us away from our true mission, our true calling. God, I just pray for discernment for everyone listening today of what that looks like, when to do one over the other and not get completely sidetracked uh, as Satan tries to frustrate our ministries, tries to frustrate our missions and uh, frustrate our uh, ability to talk to other people about you, God. Thank you for your strength in understanding the difference between the two and the timing of the two as well. In your son's name, I pray. Amen.